Hello everyone! How are you? It's your teacher Gem once again. And this week, we are now on our week 2 in our Science 6 for your quarter 4. And this time, we will discuss what to do before, during, and after earthquake and volcanic eruptions. Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel, Tutorial by Sir Raymond. My name is Mr. Jem Raymond Ischen, Master Teacher 2 from Escalante Central Elementary School. Welcome to our science class! And our objective for this week is to enumerate what to do before, during, and after earthquake and volcanic eruptions. We will check now your assessment that you took last week. Okay, now are you ready? Number 1. Where does an earthquake originate? A. Epicenter B. Focus C. Intensity or letter D. Magnitude What's your answer? Saan nagmumula ang earthquake? Yes! The correct answer is Focus. Focus is the center of the earthquake. Next, number 2. Which of the following event causes an earthquake? A. Mixture of crustal plates B. Too much heat from the sun C. Movement of crustal plates or letter D. Changing temperature Anong dahilan ng paglindol? The correct answer is Letter C. The movement of the crustal plates O ang paggalaw ng mga lupa. Number 3. Which of the following describes the effects of earthquake? A. Tsunami D. Damaged buildings C. Landslide Or letter D. All these are correct. Ano yung mga epekto na naidulot ng paglindol class? Yes, the correct answer is All of these are the correct answer. Tsunami, damaged buildings, landslides, are among of the effects of earthquake. Number four. Which of the following describes the effects of volcanic eruption? A. Soil becomes fertile. B. Lava can damage properties. C. Can result to respiratory illnesses. Or letter D. All these are correct. Ano naman yung epekto ng pagputok ng vulkan? Yes, the correct answer is Letter D, all these are correct. The soil becomes fertile, the lava can damage properties, and of course, it can result also to respiratory diseases or illnesses. Number 5. Which of the following statements is correct? A. Magnitude refers to the amount of energy released by an earthquake from its focus. B. The movement of plates on the crust is often accompanied by earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. C. Thickest layer of the earth is called the crust. Or letter D, answer A and B are correct. What do you think is the correct answer for number 5? The correct answer is letter D. Both A and B are correct. So magnitude is the energy released by an earthquake. And the movement of the plates can cause earthquake and volcanic eruptions are also correct statements. We finished discussing about the causes and the effects of earthquake and volcanic eruptions. We discussed this last week, right? And we all know that earthquake and volcanic eruptions can bring harmful effects to all of us, right? And it is very hard to tell when these earthquake and volcanic eruptions may happen. Pero meron tayong mga magagawa para hindi tayo masyadong maapektuhan kung mangyari man ang mga earthquake and volcanic eruptions. Here are some of the things that you can do to protect yourself, to protect your family, no, and to protect your friends against the harmful effects of this earthquake and volcanic eruptions. To minimize the harmful effects of earthquake, 
what are the things that you need to do? What to do before an earthquake? Ano ang dapat mong gawin kung wala pa ang paglindol? The first thing to do before an earthquake to happen is to perform earthquake drill. We've done this already in our school, right? Even up to this time, we are still performing earthquake drill. We have to participate always when there is earthquake drill class. You have to know and understand the purpose of earthquake drill. Bakit nga ba nagkakaroon ng earthquake drill? You have to know what to do in case there will be earthquake that will happen. Because when earthquake strikes, no one will tell you what to do. Wala nang ibang tao na magsasabi sa inyo kung ano ang gagawin kung in case mag mangyari man ng earthquake, dapat alam mo na kung ano ang gagawin. Don't expect that someone will guide or will give you instructions what to do in case there will be earthquake. And for you to do that and for you to know what to do in case of an earthquake, you have to participate to earthquake drill, to regular earthquake drill. In our school class, we are conducting quarterly earthquake drill. We are conducting earthquake drill once every quarter. Ganon ka-importante kung bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng earthquake drill. Now, before an earthquake class, you have to prepare an emergency plan to cope with the disasters. You have to plan together with your family. You have to plan not only for yourself, but also for the other members of your family, even your neighbors. What to plan? Ano ang dapat paplanuhin? Now, if ever na magkalayo kayo in case na mangyari ang lindol, you have to plan ahead of time kung saan kayo pwedeng magkita. There should be a designated area kung saan pwede kayong magkita, mag-anak, no, as your evacuation area. Hindi po pwede na mangyari o pagkatapos ng lindol, magte-text na lang kayo kung saan kayo pwede magkita. Hindi po pwedeng ganyan. No? Hindi pwedeng tawagan ko na lang through cellphone yung other members ng family ko in case no? hindi kami magkita after the earthquake. Hindi po pwede yan, class, kasi kapag ganitong mga disasters like earthquake and volcanic eruptions, may posibilidad na mawawalan tayo ng cellphone signal at maaring hindi natin makontak yung ating mga membro sa ating mga pamilya. Kaya maging familiar ka dapat alam mo na or dapat alam na ng other members of your family yung inyong evacuation area yung designated evacuation area ng inyong pamilya na kung saan pwede kayong magkita in case or after ng paglindol or ng isang disaster. Dapat lahat ng family members alam yung mga emergency exits ng bahay ninyo or sa mga lugar kung saan kayo madalas pumupunta. Importante na malaman nyo in case of emergency alin pa ba ang pwedeng badaanan aside from the main entrance. So ngayon pa lang kung magkakalindol man, kinakailangan, alam mo kung saan ang mga emergency exit ng bahay nyo o nung mga lugar na palagi nyong pinupuntahan. Dapat familiarize nyo na yon. Before an earthquake happens, check carefully the structure of your house or buildings. You look for potentially dangerous things no, found in your house such as the hanging objects and the falling debris. Suriing maigi ang inyong bahay. 
Pwede nga, class, magsagawa kayo ng tinatawag na hazard mapping. Ano ba yung tinatawag na hazard mapping? Punta kayo sa mga parts ng inyong bahay. No? Tumingala kayo, tumingin kayo sa ibabaw at tingnan ninyo kung sakaling maglindol. Alamin mo kung ano ang maaring bumagsak. Tingnan mo din ang palibot ng inyong bahay from left to right, front and back. Kung sakaling lumindol, ano kayang mga bagay ang pwedeng tumumba? Like mga cabinet, ganun din sa ibaba class. Tumingin ka din sa ibaba ng bahay nyo. Tingnan mo kung saan pwede kang magtago in case na magkalindol. So, yun yung mga importanteng gawin para masuri nyong maigi at magsagawa kayo ng hazard mapping ng inyong bahay sa hindi pa nangyayari ang lindol. Again, tumingala kayo sa ibabaw ng bahay nyo. Alamin nyo kung ano ang pwedeng bumagsak sakaling maglindol. Tumingin din kayo from left to right, front and back, kung ano ang pwedeng bumagsak. Tumingin ka rin sa ibabang bahagi ng inyong bahay. At tingnan mo kung saan ka pwedeng magtago in case na may lindol. Next is, you have to familiarize yourself with your home, your school, or to the place you are frequently visiting. Know the routes, yung mga ruta class, that you will take if you get out from that building in case of an earthquake. Dapat alam mo kung saan ka pwedeng lumabas in case na magka-lindol. Alamin mo kung saan ang mga emergency exit ng mga lugar na lagi mong pinupuntahan. In relation to that, you have to find the place also where fire extinguishers, the first aid kits, the alarms, and the communication facilities are located. Before disasters class like earthquake, you have to prepare a go bag. What do we mean by go bag? This go bag is packed with essential items. No? Keep ready for use in the event of emergency evacuations of one's home or buildings. Dapat lagi itong nakahanda na para kung in case na mangyari ang lindol, ito na ang kukunin mo kasi nandito na lahat ang mga importanteng mga bagay, mga pagkain para ka makasurvive in case na magka roon na mga sakuna. Ano bang dapat ilagay sa tinatawag nating go bag? Okay, let's see if you already know what are the essential things included inside the go bag. Let's see if you could answer this. Which of the following is not preferably found inside a go bag? A. Flashlight B. Birth Certificate C. Medicine or Letter D. Bread Ano kaya dyan ang hindi kinakailangan na ilagay sa inyong go bag? Anong sagot mo? Oh, try to guess. Okay, the correct answer is letter letter D bread. <laughs> sir, pagkain yan, sir. Nahalaga yan. Yes, I know bread is food, but bread is not recommended to be included in the go bag. Bakit, sir? Pagkain naman yan. Now, ang dapat isama sa go bag class ay yung mga pagkain na hindi agad-agad na mapapanis. Ilang weeks or ilang months dapat hindi siya madaling mapanis. Yes, food. We can include food in our go bag. But foods like canned goods or yung mga dilata, biscuits or bis yung mga biskwet, pwede din ilagay sa go bag pero hindi pwede yung bread. Kasi yung bread class, madali lang itong masira. ba? May mga bread na dalawang araw lang, tatlong araw lang, masisira na. 
hindi mo pa naman alam kung kailan at saan mangyayari ang earthquake, di ba? This go back is intended for emergency use. So meaning, nakaredy na siya dyan sa isang sulok ng bahay nyo at in case na magka-lindol or magka-emergency, kukunin mo na siya agad-agad. E paano kung sa tagal ng na-store sa bag yung bread na nilagay mo? Pag nagka-emergency, nakalimutan mong i-replace yung bread na yon sa loob ng bag mo. E ano pang kakainin mo kung nagka-emergency na? Kasi ang tagal na nung pagkain na bread na nasa loob ng go bag, inapanis na yon, di ba? So again, food is okay. Pero yung mga canned goods lang, mga dilata, mga biscuits, hindi recommended yung bread kasi yung bread madali lang itong masira. So now, yung flashlight, yung birth certificate, yung medicines are important no, to be included in the go bag. Now, let me tell you what are the things to be included inside a go bag or yung tinatawag nating mga emergency bag. What every go bag should contain. Number one in the list is, of course, the food. But food that hindi madaling masisira. No? Just like biscuits. And of course, don't forget the canned goods. No? Yung mga dilata, hindi madaling masira. Pwede mo yung ilagay sa go bag. And of course, don't forget water. Yung malinis na tubig. Kahit isang litrong tubig lang, class, pwede nang ilagay sa go bag. What every go bag should contain? Yes, another one is the first aid kit. Importante na mayroong first aid kit sa loob ng go bag. Hindi naman natin dinadasal, pero in case na magkasakit or masugatan ka or other members ng family mo, ready kayong gamutin yung sakit o sugat ng inyong membro ng pamilya. So, importante ang first aid kit no, na panlinis sa mga sugat no, like betadine, the alcohol, at yung mga gamot sa mga sakit sa mga lagnat at iba pa. So, kinakailangan mayroong kang first aid kit sa loob ng go bag. What else are included inside the go bag? Yes, the tools. You can use scissors, the knives, no? sa iba't ibang sitwasyon, katulad ng pagluluto. Okay? Kung medyo masyadong malaki talaga yung epekto no, sa bahay nyo or sa lugar nyo, yung lindol, at least may mga gamit kang mga tools, especially sa pagluluto. Okay? And also, pwede rin ilagay as tools yung mga lubid class. Putali. Pwede mo itong ilagay din sa loob ng go bag. Next is, you can use also hygiene kit inside your go bag. So, mahalagang malinis ka palagi sa katawan. Kaya, importanteng may hygiene kit ka na ilalagay. Dahil dito, dapat maglagay ka ng toothbrush, ng toothpaste, shampoo, sabon, o tissue sa loob ng iyong hygiene kit. No, dapat included din ito sa iyong go bag. What else to be included inside the go bag? Yes! You can include money, ID, or other important documents like passport or birth certificate. Dapat class may pera ka upang may kakayahan kang makabili sa mga pangangailangan mo in case there will be earthquake that will happen in your locality. Mabuti ding magkaroon ng pagkakakinanlan ang bawat miyembro ng inyong pamilya sa panahon ng sakuna. That is why you need to include ID or birth certificate o mahalagang dokumento sa loob ng iyong go bag. Ano pang dapat ilagay sa go bag? Yes, pwede rin power bank class. No? Mahalagang may power bank ka na nasa go bag upang hindi agad-agad maubusan ng baterya ang iyong cellphone or other electronic devices para makausap mo ang mga mahal mo sa buhay, pati ng ibang tao all of course. Importante din class yung flashlight, yung ilaw, no? at radyo. 
hindi natin alam kung kailan, anong oras mangyayari talaga yung mga emergency. What if kung mangyari yan gabi? At lahat ng poste nyo natumba na. Wala ng ilaw, di ba? So, kinakailangang may flashlight ka na ilalagay mo sa go bag mo. At of course, yung radio din. Pusibling mawala ng kuryente during the earthquake. So, kaya mahalag, mahalaga na mayroon kang flashlight para may ilaw ka na magamit no, in case gabi ito mangyayari. So, importante din ang radio class para may balita ka na makukuha no, sa panahon ng isang sakuna. Now, kung ready na yung mga bag mo, okay na yung mga laman niya, kompleto na yung laman niya, maaari mo na itong ilagay sa lugar ng inyong bahay na madaling makita kahit sino mang miyembro ng iyong pamilya. In case of emergency, madali nila itong makuha at mabibitbit no, kung in case nalalabas na kayo sa inyong bahay for emergency purposes. This time, what to do during an earthquake? Ano na ang gagawin mo kung sakaling may lindol na? Ang pinaka-importante sa lahat, class. Keep calm when you feel the earthquake. Sakaling may paglindol, dapat manatiling kalmado. Kalma lang. Dapat nating pag-aralan, class, paano maging kalmado sa oras ng mga sakuna o lindol. Kasi kapag naunahan na tayo ng panik, naunahan na tayo ng kaba, mawawala na tayo sa ating proper mindset. Mawawala na tayo ng proper judgment hindi na tayo makakapag-isip ng maayos kapag naunahan tayo ng panik o kaba. Importante sa kahit na anong sakuna o emergency, dapat manatili tayong kalmado para magkaroon tayo ng proper decision making. Para magkaroon tayo ng wasto o tamang pagdedesisyon. Hindi na kasi tayo makakapag-decide ng maayos class kapag kung naunahan tayo ng taranta o panic. Kaya importanteng manatiling kalmado sa oras ng sakuna. Now, what to do during earthquake? Do not rush to an exit when you are in a crowded place like theater, mall, train, or stadium to avoid Stampede. Kapag ikaw ay nasa loob ng inyong bahay o matitibay na mga gusali, dapat lumayo ka muna sa maaaring bumagsak na mga bagay at manatili sa ilalim ng matibay na lamesa at doon ka kumapit ng mabuti. Take note class, hindi pwedeng lumikas, hindi dapat tumakbo patungong exit especially kung nasa loob ka ng isang gusali o bahay habang lumilindol pa okay again, take note of this hindi pwedeng tumakbo agad-agad palabas sa isang gusali o bahay habang lumilindol pa hindi ito advisable class especially kung nasa loob ka pa lang ng Bahay. Delikado ito kapag gagawin mo, especially sa nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen. Na andyan ka sa, sa loob ng mall, tapos lumindol, tumakbo ka sa exit. Kayong lahat tumakbo sa exit, so may chance na magkaka-stampid. Kasi may matutumba may matutumba sa inyo dyan. Kasi may hilo ka class, kasi yumayanig pa yung lupa. So kaya delikado kapag tumakbo ka sa oras ng naglilindol pa. Ano pa yung dahilan class kung bakit hindi po pwedeng tumakbo agad-agad no palabas ng isang gusali kapag lumilindol pa? Ito kasi yung class, 'di ba? Nahilo ka na kasi medyo yumayanig pa ang lupa. Tapos, siyempre, kung tatakbo ka, ma-out of balance ka kasi nga nahihilo ka na. Tapos, naaktuhan na nandun ka sa may malapit sa hagdanan o nasa hagdanan ka at maari kang gumulong pa ibaba. 
So in this case, maaari kang ma-injured pa lalo. At maaari ding mabagsakan ka. No? Kapag tumakbo ka habang lumilindol, nasa loob ka ng isang gusali, maaari ka ring mabagsakan kapag pilit kang tumakbo o mag-evacuate habang lumilindol pa. Hindi talaga po pwede at hindi talaga advisable na kapag yumayanig pa ang lupa, doon ka lilikas o doon ka mag-evacuate. Okay? Ang evacuation class, lalabas ka lamang sa isang gusali o sa bahay mo pagkatapos na ng pagyanig. Sa ganon, hindi ka mahihilo kapag ginawa mo yon at hindi ka ma-injured pa lalo. Habang lumilindol class, ang gagawin mo, drop, cover, and hold on. Ang gawin mo, drop, dumaba ka. Cover, and look for something to cover up your head or to cover up your body like a sturdy table. Yung matitibay na mga bagay o matitibay na mga lamesa, pwede mo yung pagtaguan to cover up your head and your body. And make sure na matibay ang pinagtataguan mo. Baka ang pinagtaguan mo marupok din. So, mababagsakan ka pa din kung in case na may babagsak talaga ng mga parts ng gusali. So, dapat matibay talaga yung pagtataguan mo. Dapat nakahawak ka din sa kung saan ka nakatago. Dapat you have to hold on. Kasi nga, umuuga pa ang lupa o yumayanig pa ang lupa. That's why you have to drop cover, and hold on. Ito yung dapat gawin, especially if you are in the indoor places, just like sa mga mall, sa mga gusali, even sa loob ng inyong bahay. Habang lumilindol class, lumayo ka din sa mga bintana, especially those made up of crystal. Baka mabagsakan ka. At kung ikaw naman ay nasa labas, pumunta ka agad-agad sa open places. Saan ka pupunta? Doon ka sa open places o sa lugar na walang istruktura no, na maaring bumagsak. So, lumayo ka sa mga power lines, sa mga poste, sa mga dingding at iba pang mga istruktura na pwedeng bumagsak kapag nasa labas ka ng isang building. Now, if you are in a moving car, when there is earthquake, ask the driver to stop and park the car away from the buildings, electric wires, or posts. Kapag nasa loob ka ng sasakyan, uh, tumatakbo ito, sabihin mo yung driver class na huminto at ilayo ang sasakyan sa mga maaring tumumbang mga bagay, just like buildings at saka mga poste. Now, if you are driving again, itabi mo yung sasakyan, and then after ng pagyanig, doon pa lang maaring paanda rin ang sasakyan muli. Okay? At, kung malapit ka sa mga tulay class, huwag nang dumaan sa mga tulay. Okay? For safe purposes. Kasi may paglindol, hindi mo alam, no? Baka yung tulay na dadaanan ng sasakyan mo, baka gumuho din bigla-bigla. What to do during earthquake? Do not use the elevators during an earthquake. Hindi po advisable na gumamit ng elevator or even escalator class during an earthquake. You can be stranded inside this elevator if a power failure occurs. Kung mawawala ng kuryente class, posible talaga na mawala ng kuryente kasi may maaring may mga poste na matutumba kapag may paglindol. So, kapag, nag, kapag sumakay ka sa elevator during earthquake, maaaring mag-brown out at matrap ka sa loob ng elevator. Kaya, hindi advisable na gumamit ng elevator during earthquake. Next, if you are residing near a coastal area, always be aware of tsunamis. Kung nakatira ka malapit sa mga tabing dagat class, tapos may pagyanig, you have to be alert there might be tsunami that will form no if you feel the earthquake if you are living near the coastal area then immediately it is advisable to run to a higher grounds what to do after
after an earthquake. Pagkatapos ng Lindol class, ano ang pwede mong gawin? Find a safe place when the earthquake is over. Kapag tumigil na ang pagyanig class, pwede ka nang lumabas kung ikaw ay nasa loob ng mga gusali. Gamit ang pinakamabilis at pinakaligtas na ruta. Dapat, doon ka lumabas sa pinakaligtas na emergency exit ng isang gusali. Kapag wala na ang pagyanig class, doon pa lang pwedeng mag-evacuate. Doon ka pa lang pwede lumabas sa isang gusali. After an earthquake class, Check the safety of your family members. If someone is missing or in trouble, seek aid to find them. Dapat humingi ka ng tulong no, sa mga otoridad in case, no, in case na may nawawala kang kamag-anak no, pagkatapos ng pagyanig. Or kung may nasugatan, pwede ka rin humingi sa mga medical team na maaaring magresponde after the earthquake. Next, do not attempt to cross bridges and overpasses which may have been damaged by the earthquake. Now, pagkatapos ng lindol, wag maging kampante, especially those bridges that are damaged already. Hindi na yun pwede daanan class. Na wag kang magtangkang dumaan pa kasi maari kang maaksidente in case na tumuloy ka No, na dumaan sa mga sira-sirang mga tulay at mga overpass. Check for fires if there are any. Some damages from the earthquake may result to fire. In case you see a fire class, locate the nearest fire control or alarm unit or even fire extinguisher, no? and you may use it to prevent na lumaki pa lalo ang sunog or pwede ring humingi ka ng tulong class no, sa mga otoridad if talagang may nakita kang pwedeng pagsimula ng sunog and of course class after earthquake you have to keep yourself updated and alert no? the authorities may issue some instructions after earthquake and of course they might give also some important things to remember to reduce the effects of earthquake makibalita ka no gamit yung radio na nasa go bag mo pwede mo yung magamit in case may total blackout na mangyayari you can hear the news over the radio this time let's discuss the preparedness for volcanic eruptions ano yung pwedeng gawin before during and after volcanic eruptions. Let's discuss first the things to be done before volcanic eruption. Now, what to do before volcanic eruption? Be aware of any unusual volcanic activity. Now, kung kayo ay naninirahan malapit sa isang active volcano, kagaya ng sa Batangas, sa Bicol, or even dito sa Negros class, meron tayong Mount Canlaon, dapat maging alerto tayo, ma-alerto ka kung sakasakaling may mga sinyalis na sa pagpotok ng vulkan. At dapat alamin mo din kung ang lugar mo o ang bahay nyo ay pasok sa lugar na tinatawag nilang 14 kilometer radius volcanic danger zone mula sa vulkan. Yung tinatawag nating 14 km radius volcanic danger zone class, ito yung lugar class na pwedeng grabe maapektuhan kung sakasakaling pumutok ang vulkan. Alamin mo kung pasok ka sa mga lugar na to. Okay? Dapat doble alerto ka kasi yung lugar mo kapag nasa uh, volcanic danger zone ka, that area will really affected when there will be volcanic eruptions that might happen. Pasok man o hindi sa danger zone class ang lugar mo, maging alerto ka pa din no? sa mga sinyales sa mga pagputok ng vulkan. Now, ito pala class yung tinatawag nating 14 km volcanic danger zone ng Mount Taal. Eh, yung nasa gitna class ay ang ating Mount Taal. 
Volcano. No? Yung Taal Volcano sa may Batangas. Ito yung Vulcan class. Ito yung bungangan ng Vulcan. Now, next is, you have to prepare emergency supplies like flashlights, candles, matches, and first aid kits. Yung go bag natin class, no? Sa diniscuss natin kanina sa earthquake, pwede mo itong gamitin din sa pag-prepare uh, sa pagputok ng vulkan, no? Yung go bag natin class, applicable yun kahit na anong sakuna na pwedeng mangyari. Nagdagdag lang dito ng candle at saka matches, pwede rin kasi itong ku mapagkukuna ng ilaw class. Ha? At saka magamit din sa pagluluto yung mga matches, na yung mga posporo. Again, mahalaga magkaroon tayo ng go bag at dapat alam mo kung ano ang dapat ilagay dito sa go bag. No, huwag kalimutang uh, dapat mayroon tong malinis na tubig, no, mga pagkain na hindi madaling mapanis, even mga damit pwede rin mo na uh, pwede rin ilagay diyan, yung first aid kit class, yung hygiene kit at yung mga mahahalagang dokumento. Even flashlight also and radio class can be included in our go bag. We've discussed this already a while ago. Pwede mong lagyan ng face mask ang iyong go bag. Next, stock some food and water bago pa pumutok ang vulkan. Hindi katulad sa earthquake class na agad-agad, no? At hindi mo talaga malalaman kung kailan magkaka-lindol. Pero itong pagputok ng vulkan class, hindi siya basta-basta puputok talaga. Bago yan puputok, usually may mga sinyalis yan, bumubuga muna ng mga abo, yan na muna yung ma makikita natin mga sinyalis. At talagang may idea yung tao na anytime puputok yung vulkan. That's why you have to prepare some foods and water before volcanic eruptions. Next, again, as I said earlier, prepare mask for nose and mouth. Yung mala, especially yung malapit sa sa mga vulkan class na no? yung mga lugar na malapit sa vulkan we have to include this mask in their go bag pero even wala tayo sa lugar malapit sa vulkan class yung mask ay importante pa din hindi lang sa pagputok ng vulkan kundi against the covid-19 virus di ba para hindi tayo madaling mahawa sa mga nakakasalamuhan natin araw-araw dapat protected tayo Include also face mask na din sa inyong go bag. No, importante din to, especially this time of pandemic. Next, evacuation center. You have to familiarize the evacuation center in case there will be volcanic eruption. May designated area kasi yan class, no? Ang bawat lugar, bawat pamahalaan ng isang lugar, may designated area talaga ng evacuation center. Dapat alam mo kung saan ang pinakamalapit na evacuation center in your place. Lalo na kung wala kayong mga sasakyan, dapat makipag-ugnayan kayo sa inyong mga kamag-anak na merong sasakyan or kung wala talaga, pwede kayong makapag-ugnayan sa mga otoridad. No? At pwede mong alamin kung saan ka pwede at kung kailan ka pwedeng makisabay sa pag-evacuate in case na uh, puputok talaga yung vulkan. Be aware also class of the alert level, no? Issued by our FIVOX, no? Yung ahensya na uh, nagbibigay alert level or mga warning, no? Sa atin, bago pa lang pumutok yung vulkan, no? Dapat alam mo to, dapat informed ka, no? Sa mga inilalabas na mga alert level warnings ng FIVOX o yung Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. So, bilang mga residente sa mga lugar malapit sa active volcano, dapat alamin natin yung mga alert level of volcanic eruption na ibibigay ng FIVOX. No, mas mabuti, alam natin also ang history ng vulkan. Okay? Kailan ito last pumutok or kailan ito huling pumutok, alamin din natin kung kailan ito posibleng Pumutok. And of course, importantly, listen to the radio or people of the authority for safety and instructions. So, kinakailangan uh, makinig ka ng mga balita, you have to be informed no, sa mga bagay na pwede mong gawin bago pa lang pumutok ang vulkan. Ito ay usually binibigay sa ng mga otoridad o ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno. What to do during volcanic eruption?
stay in the evacuation center. Walang ibang gagawin kundi lumikas agad-agad papalayo sa bulkan. Ang binubuga ng bulkan ay siguradong makakasama sa ating katawan. Yung mga abo, yung mga ash falls class, kapag na-inhale mo ito, maaari kang magkasakit ng respiratory related diseases. So napakahalaga talaga na lumayo ka na bago pa lang, no actually bago pa lang pumutok ang bulkan. Kung pumuputok na yung bulkan, you have to stay in the evacuation center designated or assigned by your local government. Now, if caught indoors class, kung nasa loob ka ng bahay nyo tapos umabot pa yung mga ashes no, from the volcanic eruption, all you have to do is to close all windows, doors, and other openings and remain indoors. Okay? Kung aabutan talaga ng ash falls ang bahay nyo, o yung mga ash falls class, yung parang buhangin, yung mga abo na medyo mabaho din class, no? at umabot ito sa ating tahanan, isarado ang lahat ng pwedeng mapasukan nito like pintuan, mga bintana, at takpan no? ng mga basang tela as much as possible. Dapat may mga basang tela class para at least doon na doon kakapit yung mga ash at hindi talaga tuluyang papasok sa iyong bahay. Next, cover your nose with a mask or damp cloth when volcanic ash or dust is present in the air. Eye goggles class, pwede din naman. Pwede rin yung mask, no? Kung nasa loob ka ng bahay. Kung walang mask talaga, pwede rin gumamit ng basang tela. Pwede rin basang panyo at itakip mo sa bibig at ilong mo. Basang tela ang recommended ng FIVOX class para maiwasan ang paglanghap ng mga volcanic ash. Uh, basang tela para didikit lang yung ash sa, sa may tela at, at hindi mo talaga diretsyo na malalanghap no, yung abo. Also class, keep your food and water covered. Takpan ng maigi ang lahat ng pagkain at ang mga maiinom na tubig. Okay? Kapag may pagputok na ng Vulkan. And also, stay away from low places, especially those who are included in the volcanic danger zone. May mga bato, malalaking bato, mga lava, and mga mud flows na pwedeng makasira sa mga lugar malapit sa vulkan. So you have to stay away from these low areas. Ano naman ang gagawin mo pagkatapos pumutok yung vulkan? Now, after the eruption, do not go back home right away. Wait for the instruction on what to do and when it is safe to go back home. No? And that instructions will be coming from your local government or yung FIVOX. No? So, dapat magpatingin din kayo sa doctor class no? kung meron kayong nararamdamang masasamang Uh, pakiramdam kasi baka nakalanghap kayo ng mga ashes no? at delikado ito class. Kaya para manigurado, you have to consult a doctor if you feel bad after the volcanic eruptions. Next, avoid crossing a bridge when lahar flows under it. May posibilidad kasi class na masisira yung tulay kapag may mga lahar flow na. Avoid crossing that area first no? for safety purposes. And also, remove ash from your roofs. Now, kung maglilinis ka ng mga ashfall class, huwag itong basain. No? Bawal itong basain. At lalo, huwag i-drain ito sa kanal. No? Huwag mo itong ilagay sa kanal. It is advisable class na walisin lang ito at ipunin lang sa isang sako. Kung may paglindol, i-check mo din yung tahanan mo kung ligtas ba na tirhan muli. Of course, check also if your drinking water is clear and if the electrical wirings at home are intact and safe. No? Importante yung tubig class. Dapat alamin mo kung safe pa bang tubig na iinumin nyo. At of course, the electrical wirings. No? Your, your father can, can do that. At tingnan no, kung okay pa ba yung mga wiring sa bahay. Okay, after volcanic eruption. This time, let's answer first this activity. Number one, which of the following should not be done 
during an earthquake when you are inside a building? A. Seek shelter in a doorway or take cover under a heavy table. B. Be aware of the possibility of open electrical lines. C. Familiarize yourself the route you will take to take out from the building in case of an earthquake. Or letter D. Rush to the doors and get in an elevator. Ano dyan ang bawal gawin or hindi dapat gawin kapag may lindol na na nagaganap? The correct answer is, what's your answer? Yes, it's letter D. Rush to the doors and get in an elevator is not advisable to do during an earthquake. Number two. Which precautionary measures should be done before an earthquake? A. Cover your nose with a damp cloth. B. Prepare an emergency survival kit. C. Do not cross bridges if you are driving. Or letter D. Check yourself and every family member for injury. What's your answer? Yes, the correct answer is letter B. Prepare an emergency survival kit. Kit. This should be done before an earthquake. Number three, which of these is not observed when a volcano is about to erupt? A. Earthquake. B. Lahar. C. Rumbling sound. Or letter D. Unusual behavior of animals. The answer is letter D. Unusual behavior of animals. Number four, which government agency monitors and issues warning on volcanic activities? A. Pag-asa, B. DNR, C. BFM, or letter D. FIVOX? Yes, the correct answer is letter D. FIVOX. Number five, what must the people living in a volcanic danger zone do before a volcanic volcano erupts? A. Listen to the latest bulletin. B. Make the necessary repairs on roofing. C. Follow government advice. Or letter D. All these are correct. Answer is letter D. All these are correct. These are important things to be done before volcano erupts in the places under volcanic danger zone. Okay, what to do before earthquake class? Sa wala pang paglindol, ano ang dapat gawin? Yes! Now, what to do during earthquake? What to do after earthquake? What to do before volcanic eruption? What to do during volcanic eruption? What to do after volcanic eruption? Now, when you are following all these precautionary measures class, before, during, after earthquake and volcanic eruptions, what value are you showing? Yes, you are showing the value of disaster preparedness. Now, please get one fourth sheet of paper. Let's have your assessment. Are you ready? Now, direction. Write true if the statement tells of safety precautions and false if it is not. Again, direction. Write true if the statement tells of safety precautions and false if not. You only have to write true or false in your paper. Okay? And your time starts now.
That's all for this week class. Thank you so much for participating. Have a blessed week ahead. See you next week. Don't forget to stay home and be safe always.